Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another robotic trading video. If you're newer to this series specifically, what we're gonna be doing is uh, basically we're gonna be talking about trading with robots and how uh, trading with a robot is is something that I've done for a long time. It's something that has been uh, made more comfortably comfortable to me over time. But we're gonna be taking a look at the Grandmaster 5.0 today, which we have been working on and talking a little bit about on the channel. Uh, you can see it's this thing over here. It is currently monitoring this chart and. Uh, what it's doing is it is basically managing a grid system for me on SPX 500. That's what I've got it running on right now. Uh, I am currently running a couple different tests on this bot on a couple different uh, charts. But what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to talk a little bit about how things are going so far. Of course, it's looking really, really good just because the S&P 500 has done really well. And this system is net uh, oriented towards the long side. Now, these uh, levels here have been drawn in by a script that I just downloaded loaded off the internet just to help see past orders. I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it's been up to. So all I did is I, I put in this uh, P4L order history. You can find that on the uh, Google, just search it up. Someone has put it out for free, which is kind of cool. But uh, basically just uh, put this on here and I wanted to show you kind of the trades that it's been taken. Now, uh, what we can actually see is we can see over on the panel here kind of uh, some of the details as well. So what you can see is that it's taken, since I started this just a few days ago, it's taken five trades. And in those five trades, 100% of them have been profitable. Now, please know I'm not here to try and make it sound like any system has a 100% win rate because that's not really true, right? Uh, the reality is that this 100% win rate is so far and five trades is not that many. I do expect completely to take losses with this bot. Uh, and based on kind of my approach to using this software, I had a bullish bias on the S&P 500 down in these areas. Uh, I had no idea it would rally so, so aggressively. Uh, we can actually take a look, for example, on the one hour chart and you can see uh, that the S&P was just selling, 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 selling. And I picked up a bullish bias after we kind of put in this higher low, I turned on the bot and sure enough, I turned it on at just the right time because price has just been going up, 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 which is awesome for the bot. Because remember the way this thing, if you, if you're not familiar, uh, or I'll try and just give a, a brief explanation, what this thing does, will go to the current situation, the current trade that it's in. It is looking to just take a small profit out of the market. Right now it is targeting $25. So if price goes up uh, $25, it will close out for a profit. And so after $25, you can see that green line there, that would be the point at which it goes ahead and banks profits. And it's done that several times already. So you can see the historical profit so far is $144.71. And, uh, you know, this is SPX 500, so I'm using small lot sizes here. This is still, uh, it is kind of a, a demo, not demo, but a still in test mode uh, with this new 5.0 and trading it on some newer markets. I've been playing around with this and, uh, you know, keeping things very small. So $144 though in profit is not bad at all, especially considering uh, this is only a day or two into running the bot. I think it's actually three days technically, but uh, anyways, now, what this thing does is it essentially sets up a grid, right? So it's saying if you think that the if you think the S and P 500 is bullish, this thing is not a set and forget robot. I always try and mention that, and it's on the sign up page for if you decide to get the tool, which is linked down below in the description, by the way. You know, it's not something where you just oh you just turn it on and it just makes you money. No, this is kind of just an assistant to my trading. So I mentioned I had a bullish bias on the S and P 500. I thought that this thing could go up. I didn't know it would go all up like this, but it's kind of cool that it did. So my goal here is to pick a direction. So I am bullish on the S and P. I could switch this to sell if I was bearish, but right now I am net bullish on the S and P 500. So I chose to set the direction, turn on the bot. I turned you know the the pause to to start. EA or whatever. And now it's running. So I've got this bullish bias at any point. If I'd like to turn that off, I could, right? So if I wanted to say, well, I'm not so bullish on the S&P 500 anymore, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the, uh, the positions that I've got and just turn off the bot. I can do that. Or maybe I even pick up a sell uh, opinion on the S&P 500 and I change this to sell. What that will do is it will start looking to close out of buy trades and actually start looking to sell the market. So again, it's more of a tool than an automated, you know, oh, you just does everything for you trading bot. That's not really what it's designed to be. 
as uh, you know, we've received so many messages from people who use past versions, right? The 4.0, which is still pretty popular. People who use it on different markets, they have different approaches and strategies. So it really is meant to be like a tool. But the way I'm using it personally right now is I am setting up a grid on the S&P. So that means that if price were to come down, right, I would be able to pick up some more uh, S&P buys at a lower price. I'm starting with very small lots so that if I need to, or if I would like to, right, I can set up a grid and build a position to help me average into a trade uh, because again, I am making the bet, I'm taking the risk that I think that the market could still go up. So that's kind of how I'm approaching this. If this thing, you know, it's really just an if then statement. If it goes up, it closes profits. If it goes down, it builds the position. And again, there is risk involved with that. I'm not gonna act like there isn't risk to building a grid system, but all trading is risk. And all successful trading is calculated risk. So that's how I'm approaching this. So for now, um, you know, things are looking good so far. You can kind of see if we look at the uh, trades in detail, kind of historically, what has happened is we turn on the bot, it bought here and it closed out a profit very quickly. I think when I first started this thing, I had it only set to take like $15 of profit out or 10 or 15, something small. And I realized I wanted to bump that up just a little bit and turn this into a little bit slower paced robot. In fact, I may even turn that up more. I'm thinking about trying to, to alternate this and actually go for something like 40 or $50. I haven't made a full decision on that, but uh, that way it's just not, I'm not worried about taking a lot of trades with this bot. I'm looking to just take, uh, you know, occasional trades and, and something that requires me to look at this not so much, right? I, for testing reasons, I'm watching this thing constantly right now until I feel a little bit more um, not uh, or m until I feel a little bit more comfortable with how things are how how things are going. But uh, yeah, again, so took a trade here, closed out here, which opened another trade right away. Since this is just a pure grid system right now, it's not waiting for dips. You could pull, you could set the pullback entries to true, right? That would be basically saying, you know, it's waiting for a dip again uh, in order to, to get back in based on the RSI parameters that you set up. All of that is infoed in the uh, manual, by the way, that you get when you get the tool. But anyways, um, so bought here, closed here, and then opened up another one closed there, bought another one, right? Closed, bought, closed, bought, closed, and bought, which we are currently sitting in right now. So that's kind of, uh, you know, everything that's done so far. It's closed out a good bit of profit just for the time that's been doing. In fact, it's closed out a lot more than I expected. Um, and uh, th that's actually something to pay attention to. Of course, I'm happy that it's making money, don't get me wrong, but those swings on the account uh, are more than I was expecting it to do. Probably just a little bit on my end because I'm not super familiar with trading uh, SPX in this way. Usually, uh, if I'm trading the S&P 500, what I'm doing is I'm looking at it from a um, from a stock market or a futures perspective, just because you know most of the time when I'm trading on uh, on forex brokers, I'm trading currency pairs and, and sometimes gold. Uh, SPX and the indices are something that's kind of newer to me, but I've wanted to run a grid on them for a while. Uh, in the future, you may see me doing series on uh, other markets, right? Maybe we'll try things like the Euro dollar or the Aussie dollar, or maybe even gold. But again, uh, these do require a bit larger of an account size because they are quite volatile. And that's why I'm saying, I think that the historical profit here is a little bit much for, you know, what I was expecting, which is good. But remember, whenever there's a lot of profit coming in, it can turn ugly very quick. So I want to I want to stay focused on that and try and see how this thing goes for a little while. But at the end of the day, um, I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is I might actually increase the grid distance of this just because I don't want this thing. You know, if you were to get a pretty substantial dip, I don't want to build a huge position on something that is uh, very, very aggressive to the downside. For example, uh, just putting it in perspective, let's say that we had bought here, right? So this would have been trade number one. We would have actually gotten the grid number two at that 1000 pips away, which is that distance, right? And then number three would have been triggered right here. So technically uh this is this looks fine to me um but that would probably be you know a couple hundred dollars worth of drawdown which is fine i think that's probably reasonable but i may look to adjust the next trade distance from uh 1000 to possibly up to like 1500 
just to expand that distance a little bit and possibly reduce drawdown should it happen. Which, because the thing is, we know it's coming, right? You know at some point when you run a grid, you are going to have to deal with it taking several positions. And if that scares you, then probably the best approach is to think about increasing your uh, grid distance so it doesn't pick up so many trades so quickly, or you can reduce the lot size, things like that, or trade markets that are less concerning, right? Especially if you're looking at smaller accounts. What I've found in my demo testing is that smaller accounts have a lot harder time doing a grid because again, if you can't handle more than 0.01 on your account anyways, it's probably not the, uh, you know, the right approach for you, just because grids do require a little bit more capital, uh, considering, yes, we're starting small, but if your account is so small, then it can't handle picking up a position or two or three or four, right? Uh, it's got to, it's basically got to handle that. I'm also thinking about reducing the number of grid levels, right? I don't know that I need 20. I really don't even think I want to take up to 20. I think I'm more comfortable with something like 10 and just expanding this. But again, I'm just, I'm just throwing darts against the board here. If you like these videos, again, this is just raw me in test mode. I'm sharing this journey with you guys as a robotic trader of several years. I've done many things on currencies and had plenty of, you know, good success on those sort of things, but I am expanding and trying new things myself here, even six years into my trading journey. So if you enjoyed this, if this was something that you liked, uh, this video, if you like robotic trading, if you want to learn more about that, the best way for you to do so is to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button down below. And if you want to get a copy of the tool and start playing with it yourself, you're more than welcome to. It is not a free uh, not a free tool. It is something that we've put in a lot of time and effort on the design and programming and uh, you know building the manuals and all that stuff, all the customer support as well. If that is something that is interesting to you, if you'd like to co get a copy of the tool, you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description and getting a copy off of our website. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you got something out of it. And with that said, we'll see you back next time. What's up guys? Thanks for watching today's video. There are more videos available on our channel here and here. So go ahead and click into that for some more free trading content. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you back next time.